This video is sponsored by The Rich Wallet. More on that later in the video. Today we'll see if 25% is the best rice for your sourdough bread, even if you add more and more whole grain. Hi, I'm Suna and I'm a food geek. So it seems like these days there's a general consensus that a rise of 25 to 50% is a good rise for your sourdough bread. But a lot of people are saying that if you put more whole grain in the dough, you will need to let it rise more. Instead of quarreling about it, I thought experimenting on it would be a better way to go. So I devised an experiment where the control will be my standard experiment bread and the loaves that we'll compare to are 0%, 50% and 100% whole grain. So I've completely stopped using a regular wallet. Everything I need is on a plastic card these days and the rich just makes an awesome durable card holder with room for up to 12 cards. Now Rich also makes a matching key case. You can attach it to your keys as I did or just put it in your pocket. Isn't it gorgeous? This is my new daily driver. Get the best offer with the link rich.com foodgeek and right now you can save up to 40% through December 22nd. That's rich.com foodgeek. Thanks to Rich for sponsoring this video. So my standard experiment dough is as follows. 80% bread flour, 20% whole grain flour, 80% hydration, 20% inoculation, and 2% salt. The dough that I will make in this experiment is my standard experiment dough, varying the amount of whole grain in the dough. The bread flour that I'm going to be using is Caputo Manitoba Oro, and the whole grain is freshly milled flour that I'm milling myself on my mock mill on the finest setting. The grain that I'm milling is hard wheat, but I won't be sifting anything. So it'll be a high extraction flour with a fine texture. It's important that it's hard wheat uh, as uh, not other kinds of grain have as much gluten. So trying to bake 100% rye or even spelt with this technique would fail miserably. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the super thanks or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Those were the words. This is the experiment. First, I mix all the different doughs. And then I let them rest for an hour to develop the glue. Then I perform three sets of stretch and fold spaced out by 30 minutes. And all the doughs go into proofing containers. And into the proofer to grow 25%. The zero percent was done first, so I pre-shaped it. And then final shaped it and into the fridge.
and then the 50% was done just after I put the 0% in the fridge. I pre-shaped it. And then final shaped it. Alright, after that, the control and the 100% were done. I pre-shaped them. And then I final shaped them. Then they stayed in the fridge for about 36 hours. I then turned my oven on to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit with my Challenger inside. After 30 minutes, I grabbed the 0% out of the fridge. I dust the bottom to help it slide easily off the peel. I flip it onto the peel. I score it. and I bake it. After about 25 minutes, I grab the control out of the fridge. I dust it. I flip it. I score it. And um, then I move the syrup percent out of the Dutch oven and then I bake it. And the rest were done the same way, so I'll just cool them all down now. All right, let's have a look at the crumb.
And then it's time for the Food Geek Signature Sniff and Taste Test. But first, let's talk about the fermentation as depicted by the crumb. I know that this bread flour is really prone to big holes by itself, and it's obvious the more whole grain flour that was added, the more close the crumb is. But if you look, every crumb has tiny holes throughout, so they all look well fermented to me. The oven spring seems about the same, although it looks like the more whole grain, the less gluten development. And it's more the lower hydration that held the loaf together. None of these things are surprising. Had I pushed hydration on these loaves, I bet you the higher whole grain ones would have been much flatter. All right, let's get on to the fragrance. Mm. Smells nice, but not very much. Mm. This smells good, but not as distinct as my usual bread with rye instead of wheat. This smells nice, more powerful than the other two. Very, very weedy. Wow, this is crazy. There's so much wheat smell in this one. If you like wheat bread, you'll love this one. All right, let me taste. This bread is a little anonymous by itself. It has a really nice texture though, so it would be great with some olive oil or some great pieces of ham or salami. This one has the best of both worlds, I think. It has a distinct wheat taste, but also has much of the same texture that you get from the first bread. This one is a funny one. The wheat taste is really good, but the crust isn't as crunchy. The crumb's really nice and soft though. This one, wow amazing taste the crust is not really crunchy though which is something that i really enjoy all right that mimics exactly what i've seen in my baking so adding more whole grain even up to 100 percent does not seem to require more fermentation that's good news because that simplifies how we bake bread no matter the amount of whole grain do you agree or disagree with my findings do you have other experiences when you bake let me know in the comments also please like and share this video with other bakers. I think it's important. You might as well. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.